As you know, Photoshop has had its debut in the world of AI. Adobe combines the power of Firefly, which is their creative AI system, with its world-renowned editing software. While the system is still in beta, this also means that we can't quite use it for commercial use yet. However, it is still important to begin understanding how we're going to be able to use this in our creative workflow. In today's video, we're going over the top five AI tools in the new Adobe Photoshop beta and showing you how to realistically use them in your product photography images. As I explained in our last Firefly video, if you have not yet downloaded Adobe Photoshop beta, go ahead and log into your creative account, go to the side panel on the left and go down to beta. If you already paid for the subscription, it'll be free for you to download. If you have not yet paid for the subscription, I will have the link down below for you guys. Now let's jump into the photo. This photo here is a simple photo on a beach. I want this to feel very summery, very just fresh and outdoorsy. So the first thing I wanna do is add a blue sky into this image here. So I am going to hit select subject. It's going to select the bottles in the scene, but as you can see, it didn't select the sand. So now I'm going to go over here to the quick selection tool, add the plus sign and select the sand, the starfish. And now that we have that selected, I'm gonna to go to the polygonal lasso tool, right click, select inverse. So now everything except for what was selected is now selected. So in the generative fill, I'm going to type blue sky with wispy clouds. Now this is a text to image converter. So you can type anything that you want. If you want a beautiful sunset, if you want it to be on the beach with water in the background, you can do that. So let's go ahead and hit generate. On the right side here, you can see that we have three different variation options. You can keep generating as many times as you want until you get something you like, which is what I did when you scroll down. So to make this look more realistic, I want to soften the intensity of the blue. So I'm gonna go into filter, camera raw filter, and just drop down that saturation, bring up the luminance of the blue, and give this overall more of an elevated feel, if you will. And there we go, we've softened that blue sky in the background. Now, the next thing I want to do is remove this starfish that we have here. So in order to do that, I like to use the eraser tool to get it into a format where I'm able to make those adjustments. I am going to go over to where the spot healing brush tool is and you'll now see a new handy tool called the remove tool. You can adjust the image size at the top here and I'm just going to brush this over the starfish to remove it from the scene. Now that we've done that, the next thing I wanna do is make this scene bigger so that way we have more space to work with. So I'm gonna use the crop tool and I know that we have the content aware fill tool, but this new AI generative fill is so much better than content aware fill. Content aware fill simply tries to detect a pattern and use that pattern to extend your image, which if you've tried it, you know, it doesn't always work. AI actually reads your image and takes that information to build new information. Hit the check mark. Use the polygon lasso tool. A trick is to hold shift to make your lines straight and just make a selection and be sure to make the selection inside of the picture a little bit so it can read that bit of information. Now I'm gonna right click select inverse so that way everything outside of the image is selected. Hit generative fill, generate, and now it'll automatically fill out that white space in your scene. And there we go. Now we have three different options we can choose from and even change the cloud layout a little bit. Now the next thing I wanna do is add some more texture into the sand that we see up front. So again, I'm gonna use the polygonal lasso tool, generative fill, and type in beach sand. And now we have a couple different options yet again, and I like this furthest one. I just want to fix this piece that's messed up in the corner here. So I went ahead and did a couple more layers of tweaking just to perfect some spots I wasn't too fond of. The coolest part about this AI system is as you saw, I was able to add beach sand and it matched the sand that was already there. The same color, the same size granules. This program is made with your picture in mind, unlike Mid Journey or another program where you have to generate the image first and then add your picture in later and then use Photoshop to like combine it all. Photoshop generate stuff based on your image, your lighting, the camera positioning, it is amazing. So now I want to add some props in here. We're gonna start with a starfish. So I'm gonna make a selection in this corner here because I think this would be a really nice spot for a starfish. Generative fill, starfish. So 
here are the starfish options. I actually think I like this last one because the starfish kind of matches the orange we've got going on on the products. And the coolest thing that I want to point out here, it even gave us a matching reflection on the bottle for the starfish. Check that out. That is such a nice touch that it added. Now on the opposite side, I want to add a little seashell. So I'm simply gonna type seashell. So I did two different rounds of image generating and what I really like about this is that it gave me different types of seashells to choose from. It didn't just give me the same kind in different angles. I'm torn between this one and this one, but I think I like the way this seashell looks because naturally I would have chosen a seashell that looks like this had I been styling the scene myself. So I'm going to trust AI and use this cool little guy right here. Now I want to add some sun rays into this shot. So I'm going to make a big selection in this top corner and type sunshine and see if that terminology gets me to where I want. So here's the image that I landed on. As you can see, it gave me some options that weren't the best choice. I think it even gave me a sunflower at one point, but that is the beauty of the program is you keep generating until you find something that you want. So I'm going to go back to this base layer here, select subject. That way we can remove this top image from the bottles since it messed them up. Hit the backspace and there we go. Now I'm going to drop the opacity just a little bit. That way it's not so abrupt. And the last thing I want to do is add clouds right here because I think this part of the scene is a little barren. And then we will be on to the last tool. And just like that, we've got a cloud in that bottom corner. Now I'm going to crop this to a one by one ratio and bring it in. And now I'm going to merge visible. So it's going to squish everything together. And this last tool is so handy. We have adjustment presets. We have sunshine, warm, moody, and the list goes on and on. We have different options down here we can look into, but I like the way warm looks. So I'm gonna drop the layer opacity to help it blend a little better. And there we go. We have a nice warm summer image that we made pretty much all in the new Adobe Photoshop beta. If you found any value at all in this video, please give it a giant thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, let us know what else you'd like to see from this program. Is there anything specific you'd like us to edit or any tools you'd like us to dive into further? Let us know down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Good, 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 good. good. Boom, 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 boom.